Hello everyone, I'm Jessica River and this video is a collection of all the files from the first Five Nights at Freddy's game. Recently I have been trying to make some Five Nights at Freddy's lore videos and I found out that going through all of the Five Nights at Freddy's files online has just been a nightmare. It is really hard to organize all of that stuff from all of the games. So I've made this video to put all of the files from the first game in one place and I'm going to do the same with all of the other games. And when I say I put like everything about the first Five Nights at Freddy's game into this video, I do mean everything, including picture files from the game, audio from the game, trailers, Steam posts, you name it, it's it's here. Also, everything in this video has been time stamped and organized, so if you look at the comments down below, you can skip to whatever section you want to in this video. Also, I've highlighted some of the text from Phone Guy's dialogue, which I thought was really interesting, and at the end of the video, I'll be briefly going over some of my personal thoughts about the game's lore.
message for you to help you get settled in on your first night. Um, I actually worked in that office before you. I'm finishing up my last week now, as a matter of fact. So I know it can be a bit overwhelming, but I'm going to tell you there's nothing to worry about. You'll be fine. So let's just focus on getting you through your first week, okay? Uh, let's see. First, there's an introductory greeting from the company that I'm supposed to read. It's kind of a legal thing, you know. Um, welcome to Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. It's a magical place for kids and grown-ups alike, where fantasy and fun come to life. Fazbear Entertainment is not responsible for damage to property or person. Upon discovering that damage or death has occurred, a missing person report will be filed within 90 days or as soon as property and premises have been thoroughly cleaned and bleached and the carpets have been replaced. Blah, blah, blah. Now, that might sound bad, I know, but there's really nothing to worry about. Uh, the animatronic characters here do get a bit quirky at night, but do I blame them? No. If I were forced to sing those same stupid songs for 20 years and I never got about them, I'd probably be a bit irritable at night, too. So remember, these characters hold a special place in the hearts of children and you need to show them a little respect, right? Okay. So just be aware, the characters do tend to wander a bit. Uh, they're left in some kind of free-roaming mode at night. Uh, something about their servos locking up, they get turned off for too long. Uh, they used to be allowed to walk around during the day, too. But then there was the bite of 87. Yeah. It's amazing that the human body can live without the frontal lobe, you know? Uh, now, concerning your safety, the only real risk to you as a night watchman here, if any, is the fact that these characters, uh, if they happen to see you after hours, probably won't recognize you as a person. They'll, they'll most likely see you as a metal endoskeleton without its costume on. Now, since that's against the rules here at Freddy Fazbear's Pizza, they'll probably try to forcefully stuff you inside a Freddy Fazbear suit. Um, now, that wouldn't be so bad if the suits themselves weren't filled with crossbeams, wired, and animatronic devices, especially around the facial area. So you can imagine how having your head forcefully pressed inside one of those could cause a bit of discomfort and death. Uh, the only parts of you that would likely see the light of day again would be your eyeballs and teeth when you pop out the front of the mask here. Yeah, they don't tell you these things when you sign up. But hey, first station debris. I'll chat with you tomorrow. Uh, check those cameras, and remember to close the doors only if absolutely necessary. Gotta conserve power. Alright, good night. Uh, hello? Hello? Uh, well, if you're here to listen to man today, Jim, uh, congrats. I, I won't talk quite as long this time since Freddy and his friends tend to become more active as the week progresses. Uh, it might be a good idea to peek at those cameras while I talk, just to make sure everyone's in their proper place, you know. Uh, interestingly enough, Freddy himself doesn't come off stage very often. I've uh, heard he becomes a lot more active in the dark, though, so, hey. I guess that's one more reason not to run out of power, right? Uh, I also want to emphasize the importance of using your door lights. Uh, there are blind spots in your camera views, and those blind spots happen to be right outside your doors. So if, if you can't find something or someone on your cameras, uh, be sure to check the door light. Uh, you might only have a few seconds to react. Uh, not that you would be in any danger, of course. Uh, I'm not implying that. Uh, also, uh, check on the curtain in Pirate Cove from time to time. The character in there seems unique in that he becomes more active if the cameras remain off for long periods of time. Uh, I guess he doesn't like being watched. I don't know. But anyway, I'm sure you have everything under control. Uh, talk to you soon. <laughs> oh, hello. Hey, you're doing great. Uh, most people don't last this long. I mean, you know, they usually move on to other things by now. Uh, I'm not implying that they die. That, that, that's not what I meant. Uh, anyway, I, I better not take up too much of your time. Uh, things are getting real tonight. Uh, uh, hey, listen, I, I had an idea. If you happen to get caught and want to avoid getting stuff into a pretty suit, uh, try playing dead. You know, go limp. Then there's a chance that uh, maybe they'll think that you're an empty costume instead. Uh, then again, if they think you're an empty costume, they might try to step a metal skeleton into you. I wonder how that would work. Yeah, never mind. Scratch that. It's best just not to get caught. Um, uh, okay, I'll leave you to it. See you on the flip side. <laughs> oh, hello. Oh, hey. Hey, wow. Day four. I think you can do it. Uh, hey, listen. Uh, I may not be around to send you a message tomorrow. It's, it's been a bad night here for me. Um, uh, I'm kind of glad that I recorded my messages for you. Uh, when I did. Uh, hey, do me a favor. Uh, maybe sometime uh, you could check inside those suits uh, in the back room. Uh, I'm going to try to hold out until someone checks. Maybe it won't be so bad. Uh, I, I always wondered what was in all those empty heads back there. You know. Oh, no.
Okay, so I'm just going to point out a few things that I found interesting about these files that I found and um, things that I thought might relate to the lore of the games. The trailer for the first Five Nights at Freddy's game is the only time that you see the animatronic models moving on stage. Also, Foxy is not shown in the trailer at all, and there's an animation of Bonnie running down the hallway that isn't in the game, as well as him removing his mask, revealing his endoskeleton. On the title screen of the game, there's a scene that shows Freddy without his mask, revealing his endoskeleton. The Help Wanted newspaper article is circled in red. This might mean that the person who drew on the paper was specifically looking for a job at Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. The first of the four posters that appear on the wall say, Kids vanish at local pizzeria, bodies not found. Two local children were reportedly lured into the back room during the late hours of operation at Five Nights at Freddy's Pizza on the night of June 26. While video surveillance identified the man responsible and led to his capture the following morning, the children themselves were never found and are presumed dead. Police think that the suspect dressed as a company mascot to earn the child's trust. The second poster says, Local Pizzeria threatened with shutdown over sanitation. Local Pizzeria Freddy Fazbear's Pizza has been threatened again with shutdown by the health department over reports of foul odor coming from the much-loved animal mascots. Police were convinced when the parents reportedly noticed that what appeared to be blood and mucus around the eyes and mouth of the mascots. One parent likened them to reanimated carcasses. 
cases. The third poster says, Five children now reportedly missing. Suspect convicted. Five children are now linked to the incident at Freddy Fazbear's Pizza where a man dressed as a cartoon mascot lured them into a back room. While the suspect has been charged, the bodies themselves were never found. Freddy Fazbear's Pizza has been fighting an uphill battle ever since to convince families to return to the pizzeria. It's a tragedy. The fourth poster reads, Local pizzeria said to close by year's end. After a long struggle to stay in business after the tragedy that took place there many years ago, Freddy Fazbear's Pizza has announced that it will close by year's end. Despite a year-long search for a buyer, companies seem unwilling to be associated with the company. These characters will live on. In the hearts of kids, these characters will live on. Quote from the CEO. Then you have the rules for safety poster. Don't run. Don't yell. Don't scream. Don't poop on the floor. Stay close to mom. Don't touch Freddy. Don't hit. Leave before dark. Thank you, management. And then you have the paychecks. And the first one says, see you next week. Date 1112XX. Pay to the order of Mike Schmidt. $120. Memo. Valued employee. Signed, Fazbear Entertainment. And then you have the second paycheck, which you receive on night six. And it says, you've earned some overtime. Date 1113XX. Pay to the order of Mike Schmidt. $120 and 50 cents. Memo, Employee of the Month, signed Fazbear Entertainment. And lastly, you have the pink slip, which you get on the custom night. And it says, Notice of Termination. You're fired. Reason, Tampering with the Animatronics. General Unprofessionalism. Odor. Thanks, Management. Now I want to go over a couple of the game mechanics. It's Me appears several times throughout the game, including uh, during Bonnie's death scene, Golden Freddy's death scene, the East Hall Cam 4A, and Pirate Cove. The Crying Child poster only appears in the East Hall and is a very rare occurrence. Also, many posters and drawings that you see say things like My Fun Day, Have Balloons, Cake, and Presents. There are 13 rooms and 11 cameras. Foxy, Bonnie, and Freddy all appear on the left door. Only Chica comes through the right. I believe that Golden Freddy and Freddy Fazbear were the same character originally. This is because Golden Freddy's death scene is the same as Freddy's just without the eyes and the contrast turned up to make him look more yellow. The endoskeleton in the back room is most likely Freddy since there is a scene with Freddy in the same spot and position. This could also mean that the Golden Freddy suit is most likely Freddy's suit without its endoskeleton since it's in the back room. Freddy only roams around in the dark. You can see him hiding in the shadows of the rooms. Also, Freddy is the only animatronic with two unique jump scares. Three if you count Golden Freddy's. Bonnie is the only character besides Freddy to enter the back room. He is also the only other character besides Freddy to have a death screen. Chica and Freddy are the only animatronics to roam on the right side of the building so they were probably the ones making the noise in the kitchen. Foxy is the only character with a running animation in the game, but Bonnie has a running animation in the trailer. This could possibly mean that Scott was originally planning all of the characters to have a running animation. A few interesting things about Phone Guy's dialogue is that he says that he actually worked in the office before you, and he's finishing up his last week now. Phone Guy claims that the animatronics have been forced to sing the same stupid songs for 20 years, meaning that the animatronics would have, have to have been around for at least 20 years. The animatronics used to be able to walk around during the day, until the bite of 87. Also, Phone Guy does not specify the victim of the bite of 87 or the animatronic. Phone Guy says that it's against the rules for an animatronic to be without its endoskeleton, and because of that, the animatronics might stuff you into a suit which is filled with crossbeams, wire, and animatronic devices, especially around the facial area. And according to him, the only parts of you that would likely see the light of day again would be your eyeballs and teeth when they pop out the front of the mask. On night three, Fungi says that most people don't last this long. This could be implying that he knows about the bad things going on within the company. On night four, Fungi claims that he's glad that he's recorded these messages for you, and he asks you to check inside the suits in the back room, since he's always wondered what was in all of those empty heads back there. This is also something that you never see in game. After that, several chimes play, along with a loud screech and static, implying that something bad happened to Fungi. Thinking back on when Five Nights at Freddy's first came out and 
after going through all these files and replaying the first game, I don't really think Scott intended for there to be a story behind the game. I remember that before this game came out, between 2012 and 2014, there were actually a lot of Chuck E. Cheese and Disney creepypastas and scary stories that were floating around the internet during that time. And there was also a lot of YouTube videos during that time of people who had gotten a hold of old animatronics from the 80s and 90s and had refurbished them and um, made them sing and dance for YouTube videos and things like that. There was also things like the incident that the game theorist mentioned in his first video, which was circling around the internet during that time. And I think it's these things that influenced Scott to make this Five Nights at Freddy's game. So most of the things in this game are not really to tell a story, they're just there to make the mood and atmosphere of the game uh, creepy and relatable to the stories and creepypastas that were floating around during that time. Also, there are very few people mentioned in this game. You have the kids, the killer, phone guy, you, and the CEO of the company. It's really hard with just this game to pinpoint which one is the bad guy or if the bad guy just simply was the killer and not phone guy or you or the CEO. Because I don't think Scott had thought that far ahead with the making of this first game. I think it was people like the game theorists and other fans of this game who took the game to a whole nother level that a creator probably wouldn't even think possible. And then later Scott probably added more clues to the game and tried to make more of a story out of it. But a part of me thinks that he just makes a game spooky and cool looking and just kind of lets the fans uh, come up with their own story. It's kind of the vibe I'm getting. Um, and that's kind of what I would do as a creator is that I would give out hints to a story or pieces to a story and then I would just let the fans like just go crazy with it and come up with their own thing. That's what I would do if I was making these games and I was Scott, but I'm not Scott. I don't really know what he's thinking or what he's doing with these games, but from all the stuff surrounding this first game, I really don't think there was meant to be this big overarching story of Five Nights at Freddy's. I just think it was supposed to be a fun, spooky game where you had like a couple clippings to like kind of hint at there was an incident that happened with the company. Ooh, there, there could be possibly ghosts and the animatronics might be possessed. Ooh, we don't really know. They're scary. <laughs> just that kind of thing. Um, trying to think if there's anything else I want to talk about. Um, I wrote down a list of a couple things, but I, I know there was something else, but I can't think of it at the moment. I might put um, more information in the next video. Also, if you think I've left anything out of this video, please let me know and I'll put it in the next video when I do the second game. Whew, that's gonna be fun. Like, I, like this game, there was a lot to go through with this game and um, this is actually the smallest of the games, I'm pretty sure. Like, all the other games are like, they're a lot bigger files. Like, there's a lot more content to them that I'm gonna have to go through, so. <laughs> Oh, I'm not looking forward to that. Also, uh, I tried to make this video under um, 30 minutes and I don't think I succeeded in that and I'm sorry. <laughs> and the next couple videos might be even longer, but hopefully this has given you um, a way to easily access a lot of the files from the first Five Nights at Freddy's game and in an orderly manner. And yeah, um, thank you all for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!